I'm OptiGPU and we're going to test some games with this Intel Arc A380 running in an OptiPlex 7010. The Intel Arc A380 requires something called resizable bar, which wasn't officially even a thing until Gen 10 processors came around and we're going to be pairing it with a Gen 3 processor. So we're going to have to find a workaround here to make resizable bar work. Now this is the insides of the computer we're going to be putting it into. That is an i7-3770 processor. And we'll be running Windows 10 and the games on this 256 gigabyte Kingston SSD. I first updated the BIOS and then perused GitHub for all the info on rebar UEFI and started following the instructions. I needed to extract the image file from Dell's BIOS and I thought, how hard can it be? No matter what I tried, I could not get the files to extract. I finally found a way to extract the image file from the executable. It's this Dell Image Extract V2. And that was about where my success would end. Uh, please enjoy this montage of Search failure. For... Oh, not in hex pattern. Text. For G D COD. Cannot be found. Search. Header only. G U I D. This. And nothing happened. So I'm going to do a hex search for that. And nothing happens. Let's try a Unicode search for this. Does the search function even work? Well, the UEFI tool didn't work, so I'm going to use MM tool. I'm supposed to only use it if that didn't work for me, so I'm still following the directions. Okay, so I'm going to load my image. There it is. Open. All right, now browse and pick the rebar DXE FF that I downloaded. All right, now we're going to click Browse and go back to my downloads. And we're going to add uh, this one. That looks good. We're going to try these three other things, above 4G, MMIO, and 64-bit resource allocation. Okay, nothing I search for can find anything, so if you can find it, let me know down in the comments. Okay, this first game we're going to be testing is Halo Infinite. I'm going to make sure that VSync is turned off and we can have the maximum possible frame rate to really get a good sense of this. And I'm going to set the quality levels for the graphics to the highest setting that it says it will allow. So it looks like high might be a little too high, but medium's a little bit better than the custom settings that it started us out with. So that's what I'm gonna do. And why can't I move? Okay, I'm looking at the sky and the frame rate is zero. It seems to be hopping back and forth between a frame or zero frames. Um, let me play a little bit longer and see if I can do anything. Here we go. Uh, I'm moving and I'm frozen again. All right. Uh, it looks like I don't have to uh, try this very long to say that Halo Infinite is unplayable without resizable bar, especially when paired with this older processor. Um, I can't do anything. Okay, uh, now I'm able to move. Let's see how long this lasts. Okay, it, it didn't last very long. It's stuttering quite a bit. In all of my testing with Halo Infinite, this was actually the closest I got to actually getting a kill and getting a point for my team. It froze up right at the worst possible second, right about here, and he took me out. In Starfield, even though the frame rate looks terrible, it actually didn't stutter at all and felt quite smooth. So I'm not even sure that the frame rate is accurate because this was totally playable and smooth for me. Um, this is really weird playing without resizable bar. The testing without actually playing in games shows the graphics card shows well but then when you're in games it's kind of hit or miss and you can almost not even trust the uh, stats that are showing up in the top left because this does feel smooth to me it doesn't feel like less than 30 FPS Here's some testing with some more action and again this feels smooth to me even though it's um, at under 30 frames per second. I was able to take out enemies, even though I hadn't played this game before. I'm not very good. 
and it felt perfectly playable. Fallout 4 said it wasn't able to detect my graphics card, but in-game it was a smooth 60 frames per second, only dropping frames here or there, and was perfectly playable. I know it's not the absolute newest possible game, but since there's a show out on Netflix right now, and this is popular, I'm going to play it. It's really not super old, uh, but it plays perfectly well, and everything is smooth. We need to get in. We're on the list. Infant, adult male, adult female. Okay, go ahead. In Forza Horizon 5, the stuttering definitely came back, but uh, as you can see, <laughs> but it wasn't nearly as bad as in Halo Infinite. Uh, it's going all over the place in frame rate, anywhere between 25 frames per second to, well, actually, it went down to 7 right there, um, all the way up into the 40s and maybe peaking into the 50s but it's all over the place and stutters quite a bit. Um, really enough to be annoying. Not enough to not be able to play the game, but definitely, definitely annoying. Of course, I like to go off-road in this game when I'm testing on purpose, just to really stress out the graphics card and show its full potential. I probably didn't even have to do that in this game because it stutters so much. I did also try on medium and low settings, and it had absolutely no effect on the stuttering. It was just about as much stuttering, uh, just with worse graphics overall. Comparing the A380 with older hardware on the Optiplex 7010 small form factor with the i7-3770, it really depends on what game you wanna play. It's really hit or miss, so let me know if there's any other games you'd like for me to test to uh, give you the thumbs up or thumbs down or thumbs super down. And I'll do my best to uh, give you a good show.